evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday evening service. The Lord is good. Amen. The Lord is good. He is a faithful, faithful God. I'm just going to read uh, Psalm 80, 84, just verse 1 and 2, and just listen to this, guys. So lovely. Fire it up already. How lovely is your dual place, O Lord of heaven and army. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, yes, I faint with lodging to enter the courts of, of the Lord. With my whole being, body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your glory in this place, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your super anointed resting upon this place tonight, Father God. Oh, Pastor Gary, Lord, on uh, Miss Kim's uh, worshiping tonight, upon the congregation tonight, Father God. We just thank you, we magnify you, Lord, we glorify your holy name, Jesus, Lord. And we just pray that every eye be open, Father God, that every ear be open, Father God, <laughs> every heart be uh, open, Lord, to receive what the Holy Spirit is saying to us tonight, Father God. <laughs> we speak to you, Father God, to receive, Father God, and we come expected tonight, Father God. We just thank you and bless your holy name. We say praise the Lord for he is good. He is good to us. Praise the Lord for he is good. He is good and he is good and his mercies are new every morning. Praise the Lord. We just um, go around and greet everybody. Amen.
Darkness tries 
brought me forward here a few weeks ago.
Always good to be here, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Chrissy, you want to do the offering in a minute? Sure. Hey, think about it. Ready for that? I mean, come up here and do the offering, you know. Now you go back and do the offering back there. <laughs> sure. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, we just thank you tonight. We just, we just thank you, Lord, that you're good, that you're here, Father God. Like uh, Sister Julie was saying, Father God, you're, you do amazing things that we let you do. There are some things that we must do so you can do what needs to be done for us. Lord, we need to open up our hearts. We need to release. We need to <coughs> We need to accept your power into our lives. It's not always easy, but we reap the tremendous blessings and benefits of what you and only you can do. Yes. And we thank you so much, Lord. You're so good to us all. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we stand in all of you tonight. Again, we just we just want to say just do what needs to be done in this place, in our hearts, in our lives, to us, through us, and to our congregation, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. Krista, come on up here. Father, thank you for your presence and your peace and your joy yes, Lord. and for all that you're doing. There's just so much. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to read Deuteronomy 8.18 because it's my, it's my verse. And it says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And I, I also want to read another one, which is I've been in Philippians. So, um, Philippians 4, 19. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, Hallelujah. That we can give to you, and you want to give us more. You know, necessarily do it for that reason, but you're just you're just a more God. So let's try to give. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Seeds. 
And for whatever reason, before I had a chance to digest the seeds, it fell into something and it froze. And so for over 30, I think it's over 33,000 years until they, they found it just recently and they found the seeds inside and they planted the seeds and it started growing this plant, uh, some type of a beautiful flowered plant. It just shows you that the power of a seed, just so you, because the word of God is 2,000 years old, it has not lost its power. Amen. Amen. And you have to remember that. Sometimes we think, wow, that book is just so old. Uh -huh. Not to me. Now, maybe it's not like that with everybody else. But to me, it's like I'm reading today's newspaper. That real and that alive to me. I'm not reading some ancient script, something that was written for you know dusty old time gone by. I'm reading about something that affects me. Amen. So turn with me tonight. We're going to go to Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. We're going to start there. There's uh, two types of uh, teaching and ministering or preaching. And one is called expository, and the other is called topical. Mm -hmm. Now, I am a topical minister. I preach on topics, except tonight I'm going to be doing expository, cool. just simply because that's how it flows tonight. Okay? And so uh, uh, it's a little bit different type of, you know, what is expository? It's just verse after verse after verse. And so uh, I remember sitting under Bob Yandian uh, when I was going to Bible school, and uh, he was a master at, at uh, expository. Boy, he could just he could get in and it just would be amazing to hear what would come out of his mouth. You have other people that today that are amazing teachers that, that are able to, to uh, uh, just take the word of God and bring such revelations out of, of stuff. You're sitting there looking at it and then when they get a hold of it, it just comes to life. So in verse 15, what's the first word? Study. 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 Now, oh, when you're looking at the Bible, it's always good to remember who said it, who's it talking to, and what is the setting. And so Paul is talking to a young minister by the name of Timothy. He's a pastor. He pastors a church in Ephesus. And so uh, and we're going to find out why it says study. How many have heard this verse before? But do you know why that verse is there? Well, we have to read a little bit more to find out why. I mean, I have taken that verse and just preached a topical sermon from that. But when you when you look at why it's there, it'll become a lot more evident. Okay? And so it's a study. So it's not just talking to Timothy, it's talking to you and I. And uh, how do we do our studying today? <coughs> oh, we use YouTube. <coughs> and I use Facebook. Well, there's some good stuff on YouTube, but, but we really don't want to particularly always get our theology from, from a YouTuber, okay? It has to be the Word of God. Yeah. Now, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of good things on YouTube, and then there's not a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So you really are going to have to be very, very careful. And so it's a study to show life stamp approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, Dividing the word of truth. I always remember what Brother Hagin said. He said, if you can rightly divide the word of God, you can wrongly divide it. And so this is the context of, this is why we have to study the word of God. Paul said, we do not take the scriptures and twist them to make them say something else. Uh, Peter writing, I'm going to see if we can find it. I'm going to come back there. Peter writing about Paul said, uh, Okay. He was writing about Paul's messages. He said that they're a little bit hard to understand, but we do not twist them as some do as to uh, 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 they'll destroy themselves. Okay. In the second Peter, chapter three, verse sixteen, Peter writing about Paul. And we're going to come back to. This. As in all his letters, epistles means letters. I one time I asked them, I asked our congregation, how many do not know what an epistle is? And about half the congregation put their hands up. I said, it is not a six shooter, <laughs> like a pistol, it's an epistle. It's a letter. <laughs> and so, as in all of his letters, 
speaking in them things which are some things hard to understand, but they which are unlearned, okay? uh, which they that are unlearned and <coughs> unstable wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. And so there are people out there, and we'll share a little bit about that in a few minutes, people out there that wrestle the scriptures to make it say something that they want it to say. You can make the Bible say anything you want to have it say. You can prove anything you want to to your specifications. But what they do is they take the word of God. And we have to be so very, very careful with how we handle the word of God. Do we know everything about everything? No, we do not. And God is good and he's gracious to us. And, and but we never, never, I never get up here trying to mislead anybody. Or to, to, to teach something that, you know, I, I teach the things that I, I believe in and that I know to a degree. Do I know everything about what I teach? No, there's, there's volumes and depths to things that are just amazing. Sometimes, you know, you, you, and you hear somebody else teach it and you think, my goodness, I should have just sat down. <laughs> we walk in the light that we have, but we don't, we don't twist the light to make the Bible try to say something that maybe will fit some, some particular pet thought doctrine or something that we have. So, if we can go back to 2 Timothy now. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, I believe it was. Study to show thyself approved. Okay. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So the time will come if we mishandle the word of God. If we don't treat it right, the time will come that we're going to be ashamed or we're going to be embarrassed or we're going to be in trouble. And I don't want to be that way. I pray when I come up here uh, uh, virtually every single time, I, I pray that God would give me great accuracy in the Word of God, great accuracy in the gifts of God. Why? Because you affect people's lives by what you say or what you don't say. And so we endeavor to be careful what we're saying. We're not making... You know, flamboyant claims about something. But we want to just follow what the Word of God says. Next verse, please. Oh, Maria, there you are. I thought the rapture happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good enough. We're still here. <laughs> okay, now, but shun profane and vain babblings. For they will what? Increase. For they will increase. So what's he telling us? He's telling Timothy, he says, now things are not going to get better. They're actually going to, there's going to be more and more, there, there's going to be more and more crazies out there. There's going to be more and more what we call fruit loopers. Okay? And like I said to this kid, I said, there was a time that fruit loops was a cereal for children to eat. Today, it, it designates like a group of people. Okay? They get, the, the, they're spiritually fruit loopies. Okay? And so, uh, it says, but shun uh, those, those things of profane and vain babbling, for they will increase more and more. And so the, these things are oftentimes will take you away from the, the, the gospel. They'll take you away from God's word, take you away from God's truth. And they'll give you a, a, fence, a, a sense that, well, you can just do anything you want to. No, you can't do anything you want to. You have to stay in line. You have to stay within the bounds of the word of God. Verse 17 and their words will eat, eat, will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Now notice, it says their words will eat as a cancer. Mm -hmm. What does cancer do? Eventually, it'll kill you, in most cases. All right? And so it's, they're saying that these, these main words, these empty babblings, these things that, that might seem harmless, but they're not harmless. They get into people, and, and, and then it can eventually destroy them. All right? So I, was, I saw one today, uh, and this guy, was, he was on uh, Facebook, and uh, they, they play these little clips, they're called reels. And mm -hmm. sometimes they're really cute little things, and fun, there's some good ones in there. And uh, this guy, he, he had this minister's deep ministerial voice, spoke with eloquence and authority and power, looked at 
stare in the eye. He said, there is no such word in the Bible as rapture. Mm -hmm. There is no such word in the New Testament as rapture. Well, that, technically that is true. There's other words that, that, that are translated, into, but the word rapture isn't there. But neither, neither is the word automobile. Okay? But there's, we still got automobile. Okay? And so he was saying, there's no such thing as the rapture. I mean, he said, with, with such, a, such power, such authority, and then this other false teaching that are out there, there is no tribulation. Those are just fairy tales uh, of the church, you know, the Catholic church to keep people in line. And so he's going, you know what, there'll be, there'll be those that'll get a hold of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because there'll be people that are like, man, I, 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 I don't know if I'll make the, the rapture or not. And, and then he, it, they'll think, oh, well, maybe I, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to be really living to, as close to God as, as maybe I thought I had to. And so he said, these things, this, it says these things will destroy you. Another translation said their words will destroy you. you I mean, do you remember the, the little kid song that they used to sing uh, at Sunday school when, when people were like this? I thought I was never that small, but uh, they would sing, Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Yeah. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Da -da 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 whatever it was. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Mm -hmm. And so, what you hear yeah. can become, gets, gets, it gets downloaded at some times inside of us, and, and man, we, we can't shape some of these things. Mm -hmm. when, when Pastor Harry Fisher said to me, as a, as a very young assistant pastor, I was 30, 34, 35 years old, and a seasoned pastor, been in the ministry for a number of years, he said, Gary, even God can mess them words. Well, you know that 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 I, I had such respect for that man. I mean, I thought I had him up on my pedestal because he was he was a he was a, a minister and, and he just spoke up and spoke in tongues and everything. And uh, and so <coughs> I, I remember those things, but I never allowed them to get very deep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bishop remembers those things. Why? Because because. When you say that the, even God can't do some things, mm -hmm. yeah. well, what have we done? What we we have we what we what people try to do is to bring God down to our level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. people try to bring God down to our level mm -hmm. so that we can. He is not on our level. My ways are what higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God don't act like us, and He don't think like us. But he put it, gave us his word so we could think like him and we could act like him. And so it just simply says that these, these uh, uh, words that they speak can become like a cancer. Have you ever had anybody say something to you? I mean, just really, just, just hard to get it out? Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, they would say something. You know, sometimes a, 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 a parent can, can say something nasty to a child and say, say, you're just so dumb. You know, you never go about to anything. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, you're always going to just be be a nothing. Well, those can those can mark a person. They can shape a person. Now, what, what do we do? We say, I, I can do whatever God's word says I can do. I can have what God's word says I can have. Uh, I am what it says He says I am. Yeah. I am not what the world says. I am not. I am what He says I am. Amen. That's who I am. That's it. People, yeah. Jesus said, who do people say that I am? Well, who do people say that you are? Well, I don't know what people say, uh, uh, you know, but I know what God says about me. Yeah. And you know what? My, my wife likes to say this. She says, she says, Gary, my, I'm God's favorite. Mm. And well, I half believe that, so, you know, it's true. But you are God's favorite. Anybody that would allow them to uh, take and have, have your name carved in the palm of his hand, not tattoo, not a permanent marker, says his name is carved in the palm of your hand, he's got to be crazy in love with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm.
The words do eat of the cancer. And he names them. Okay? Now look at this, verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred. Yeah. Remember, now this is why. You know, can you go back to verse 15, Maria? This is why this verse is here. This is why, why Paul is telling Timothy, study to show yourself approved. A workman that me needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Then he goes, now we can go back to the last verse we were at. Now he begins to even name some names of some people that had strayed from the truth. They got into error, and they were taking people with them in the error. All right? And so he named the names, and he said, uh, who concerning the truth have error. So in other words, they were taking the truth, and they were twisting it, and making it say something it was never intended to say. What did they say? We don't know what it said, what they were doing. We don't know what it was. But people from, 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 from the beginning have taken... Who was the first one to twist words? In the Bible. Does anybody yeah. know me? Who was the very first one that took and twisted some words? No, no, say, serpent. serpent yeah. in the garden. Hath God said. He says, if you eat this, you'll be like God. I saw this the other day. I thought it was pretty good. Adam could have done this, but he didn't. Eve could have done this, but she didn't. And he said, if you would eat it, you would be like God. And they turned and said, well, why don't you take a bite then? Well, they didn't say that. They didn't. Hallelujah. Who concerning the truth? There is truth. There is truth. The spirit of truth. Okay. It says, that concerning the truth have erred. Now this, but um, this, I'm sorry, just tell us what they, what, what they were, were saying. That the resurrection is past already and it overthrows the faith. So they're saying that, that the, the rapture has already happened. Jesus has already come back again, and we all, we all, if you're here, you miss the boat. And so this would put panic into the believers, thinking that 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 I'm 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 going to be set now, you know, going into this tribulation. What's going on? Things are things are bad. And it's a very difficult time in these days. People could be incarcerated. They could be just for their faith, being a Christian. They could be uh, uh, killed. And so it says, concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past, and have overthrown the faith of some. So, so they, they have a people that would begin to believe it. Okay? And so there's always going to be some people that will follow some of these fringe people out there. They'll always have, they're always looking for followers. I went to a conference one time with Dr. Evan. And I think it was a, I believe the guy's name was John Maxwell. He was a motivational speaker. I don't think it was the minister, John Maxwell, but it, may, it could have been, I don't know. But I, the one thing I got out of the conference was uh, all leaders will have followers, even if it's only one or two. If you call yourself a leader and nobody is following you, you're out for a brisk walk all by yourself. And there's a lot of people like that out there. Okay? And so he, there were, they had picked up some followers that, that and they were convincing. They were convincing in, in what was being said. I saw I heard just a, a, a few days ago, and, and he was saying about Paul. He said, you ought not to be reading after Paul. Paul was deceived. Paul was missing it. You, you ought to just throw all those books out, all those things he wrote, because they're not, they're, they're not, they're not accurate, they're not true, and so on. And yet there'll be people that will listen to that. And they'll get get into the place where they get deceived. It, those things become a cancer. And eventually it'll destroy them. So that's why it's important to, to know to, where we go to church. We are studying the word of God tonight. It's not just you having a personal thing. We are studying the Word of God. We're looking into the Word of God for ourselves. And Paul, he, he warns Timothy. You're going to have to be careful. In these last days, Jesus said uh, in Matthew 24, he said there is going to come uh, an abundance of false prophets. 
Now, before, when we think of prophet, we're thinking of people that pay, thus saith the Lord. That's partly right, but the word prophet means to preach or to teach. And so people uh, that are, I'm, I, I'm prophesying tonight in the very broadest sense of the word. Because I'm, I'm preaching, I'm teaching tonight. And Jesus said that in the last days that, that there are going to arise false prophets, false teachers, false everything. And so we have to be very, very careful. We have to kind of, or not kind of, we need to know what the Word of God says about anything. Now here's, here's the thing. God has given you something, a, a, a truth detector. Okay? You've got a, you know, when, when they have a little gizmo that's called a stud finder. Okay? And so it'll find there's, this building has studs in it. Okay? I'm not saying anything, Arla, but shoot. Okay? But there's studs in the wall, and then those studs, they have like metal nails and their screws or whatever. And so uh, you, you run this little thing over there, and it'll find, it'll find the metal thing, it'll tell you where the stud is at. Okay? And so, where were we going with this one? <laughs> you have the spirit. You said we have you, a truth detector. Yeah. We, 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 have, we have a truth detector somewhere inside of us. And it's called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now your head might think, oh my gosh, that sounds, that sounds just so good. That sounds, that, that sounds reasonable. That sounds... That, that, well, I can I can see that, but not on the inside. If if you're just careful, the, the, the that truth detector goes eh, and just eh, and let you know something not right, something not right. But well, we had a gentleman here uh, came to church a few times, and and uh, uh, I visited with him some. Remember, I picked him up one day, took him out for coffee, and and heard his story, his sad story. His wife had died of cancer, and that baby was had pastored uh, for several years someplace, and, and he didn't have a car, and didn't have a job, and, and I, I really felt sorry for him. And, uh, and so, but I, the, the more I was, just even, even think about him, I, I just kind of sense, I said, something's on the inside that my head's saying, I need, I need to help this person. Maybe I can help him, maybe I can do something. You know, he's been a pastor, been in the ministry, and I thought, well, Maybe it would make a little bit, we could help him let teach a little bit or something like that. But I had this little something on the inside that just said, mm -mm -mm -mm. and so I, I didn't understand. So one day I said to the Lord, because you know, on my head, I, it all looked good. In my head, it, everything he said was right. But on the inside, in my spirit, there was a little something else. And you, you have to learn to listen to your spirit and not your head so much. Because your head, it can be easily be deceived, but your spirit won't be. Okay, mm -hmm. and so I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, something's not right. I don't know what this. I can't put my finger on something's not right. And I was up preaching on a Sunday morning, and he was sitting right back there, right behind me. And uh, uh, I said at the very end, you know, giving an invitation, I said, "There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun." I remember he got a strange look on his face, and the next day he, he uh, called me and he said, we need to get together, Pastor. I said, oh, we, and we need to talk. I could tell something was up there. Yeah. I said, well, we're on the phone right now. I said, we can talk. And he said, uh, I'm concerned about you. I said, okay, well, what, what I'm concerned about your message. I said, well, what about my message, you know? And, and he said, well, you said there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I said, yes, uh, I'm guilty. I did say that. He said, well, I've studied the word of God. I have studied and I've studied and I've studied. And I can honestly tell you, there is no hell. There is no hell. There are no flames. There is no place like anything like that. It is not true. You, you, you're, you're, you're mistaken. You're deceived. And, and I said, well... Uh, uh, you don't believe that people will, if you turn your back, if you don't receive Jesus, you'll go to hell? He said, no. He says, he says, I believe that everybody goes to heaven. I mean, that sounds good. I mean, your head would love, love that. Everybody goes to heaven. Yeah. But, but again, that's not what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. 
And so he said, everybody, he said, eventually everybody's going to end up in heaven. I said, well, what about Hitler? He said, oh, he's going. I said, Mussolini? Now, if you don't know Mussolini, he was a terrible man. And he oh, yeah, he's going. And he, I named some mm -hmm. different people. He said, oh, they're all going. I said, what about the devil? He said, oh, yeah, he's going to go too. He'll be back in heaven. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what he said to me. He said, you're a father, aren't you? I said, yes. Would you, and you love your children? I said, yes. He said, would you ever send your child, willingly send your child to hell? And, and you know, the answer, I, I didn't answer that, because the obvious answer in the natural would be no. But what he did was he took the Heavenly Father's mm -hmm. love, which is supernatural, and he brought it down and made it human. Yeah. It is not human. It is supernatural. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he put that love on the inside of us. And there is a heaven to gain. There is a hell to shine. Amen. Okay? And, and, and these things are, are very true. You, if you don't give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, it, you, you, there is a, a place that people go. Okay? And I, we say it this way. Hell was never created for people. Okay? Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Yes. We say it this way. This is always a shocker. People, I don't know about that. I say God will never send anybody to hell they send themselves because they reject the gift that God offered them. See, mm. people say, well, I, I don't see how a loving God could do something like that. If, if you could see in the realm of the spirit, these people are marching towards hell and he's reaching down, saying, you know, trying to reach, reach them, <coughs> trying to help them to get their attention so that they can, that they can reach out to him and, and receive. Because if you receive the Lord, you can, you'll be saved. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past, overthrow the faith of some. Hallelujah. We can go to the next verse. What's that first word? Nevertheless. Nevertheless. I like that. Nevertheless, the foundation of God <coughs> stands sure. Don't you just love that? I was reading a little something, I get a daily clip, and it was just talking about how dependable God is. Just how dependable mm -hmm. God is. And even, even when you're in a crisis and your things aren't going right, he says, you, you can just take a deep breath just knowing that, that you're okay. God's got it. Just mm -hmm. don't panic. Just, just, you have to learn to relax and, and kind of rest in him. Nevertheless, no matter what you and I might go through, no matter how bad it might seem, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands here. Well, what is the foundation of God? That's a good question. I just thought of that. It's the Word. What is it? The Word. The Word. Yeah. The foundation, the Word of God stands here. It's a foundation. Upon this rock, Will I build my church or upon this word? Okay? God's word is his rock. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand is sure having this seal. Everybody say seal. Seal. Well, that's an interesting word. It means that something's been sealed, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it simply says, and this, and this is the 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 foundation of that stand is sure having the seal, the seal of God. The Lord knows them that are his. Hallelujah. God knows. Mm, I don't know everybody. I don't know everybody. You know, uh, people can come to church. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day. And uh, <coughs> I was thinking about Ananias and Sapphira. Do you remember them in the Bible? Look mm -hmm. back. They were in the early church. Early church was a, in Jerusalem was a, Pentecostal church was a Catholic church, but some people believe it was a Pentecostal church, and because they spoke in tongues, had gifts of the spirit, and so uh, people started selling their property. Amen. Started selling their properties and bringing the money, and so uh, and, and laying it at the apostles' feet, and so Ananias and Sapphira they said, "Well, okay, we're, we're going to sell a piece of this property now." It's interesting to know why why did suddenly the Spirit of God have people starting to sell proper extra extra properties 
extra buildings, extra lands that, that they really didn't need, okay? Why, why would God do that? Because Jerusalem was going to be overrun and taken away and all the Jews were going to be scattered. <coughs> and God knew that. So there's no sense letting the might as make some money out of this and get the church established, okay? And so they were <coughs> bringing the money and and they said to, to Peter that this is the amount, we, we sold this property for this amount. And the Holy Spirit alerts Peter to something and and he says, are you sure this is, you know, oh yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's the right amount. This is what we sold it for. We sold the whole piece of property went for this. And then Peter, felt that moving in the gift of the word of knowledge, says, why has Satan filled your heart to lie unto the Holy Ghost and to us. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, this is just my thought. Okay, I'm not a Bible scholar, but my thought is, if he was, if, if this this was the time when people were born again. If Ananias and Sapphira were were born again, then their hearts were sealed. Mm -hmm. If their hearts were sealed. How could Satan enter into their heart? Sometimes I think deeper thoughts. Mm -hmm. so is there a natural? Oh, absolutely. They were going to church, they weren't born again. Do you know how many people go to church that are not born again? Mm -hmm. There's churches full of people that go to church, go to big mega churches, yeah. and they, they live, a, they, they have a wild, crazy lifestyle. And they go to church and everybody assumes, and maybe they assume themselves, that they're, they're born again because, well, I, I, I go to church, I give my money here. That doesn't make you born again. Okay? If you're born, listen, if you're born again, you will change. Yes. If you're truly born again, we begin to change. God begins to change us. Amen? Yes. That's because the, the Spirit of God is on the inside, and, and it might take a while. It might take some time. But God will, be, will does change it. And, but with Ananias and Sapphira, I, I don't believe they were ever truly born again. Okay? And so Satan was able to enter into their heart. When you're born again, your heart, you're sealed with the Spirit. You're not, you might not be doing right at the moment, but, that, but that's no excuse. All right, we'll get to that one too. Hallelujah. How are we doing? Good. Good. Good word, Pastor. Great word, Pastor. Nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> the foundation of God stands sure. sure. Oh, that's so good to know. It's Having good. this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. I'm so glad God knows. Amen. I'm so glad God knows. Yeah. Me too. I, I've done a lot of funerals in my day. I, I can't even count them. But I, I cannot ever remember a time that the Lord would say to me, well, Gary, do you think I'll let that person into heaven? He never asked me but what I thought. Uh, he, we don't know everybody. We don't know. You know, on the surface, they, they could look like a, a very nice person, a very good person. And my mom was a good person, and she went to church all the time. She was, They gave money to the church. She'd been going to church for... For, for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. And I said to my mom one day, I said, Mom, have you ever, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart? Now, she's a church, a member in good standing in the church. I said, have you ever, ever asked Jesus to come into your heart? She said, now, why would I do that? She said, I don't need Jesus. This is a person who goes to a Presbyterian Protestant church, okay? Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. It's a prophecy church, okay? And, and she said, well, why would I, have, why would I have to invite him? In? I'm a good person. So she was anticipating, expecting to get into heaven because of her goodness, of how good she was. Remember what we said over in Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace are you saved through faith. That, so for by grace are you saved through faith, for this is a gift of God. Not of works. The city man said, well, she was boasting on her words, what a good person she was. Well, see, she, she would have 
John Oliver and I have been in the church, and people thought, man, what a, what a good Christian lady she was. She was a good woman, you know, she, but, but she had never asked the Lord. It wasn't until, you know, until close to her, she passed away before she, she prayed and asked the Lord to come in. Okay. And so not everybody uh, that goes to church is a Christian. Sam, what, what do I have to do? You have to ask the Lord into your heart and yes. believe it, and he will come in, and, and, and he'll begin to work. I don't know about you, but, but I, when I got saved, uh, it, like I got turned around. I just, I just got turned around. I said, oh, my God. And, uh, and a few months later, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I was doing backflips. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, it was just drastic, dramatic change came in my life. Now, I can't say not everybody has that kind of experience, but I did. Okay? And so I began to change. All right. And so it just simply says that the, the Lord knows those that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from wickedness. And so it begins to tell us, uh, tell us Paul is telling Timothy that, that you know, we, we have to, we begin to depart. We start to leave some things behind. Amen. Okay. Yes. And we depart from, from wickedness. Now, we'll have to say, in a great house, uh, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but of wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. And so, it's, and now he paints a picture of a palace. I don't know about you, but there was a, 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 a movie I'd seen at one time, and it was a, a story, of, for whatever reason, I don't like old Victorian movies. I'm, I'm just not into those, those kind of movies at all with castles. Uh, this one was about a cook. And I don't know how I ended up watching it, but I ended up watching some of it. And, and this, this young lady was a cook in this mansion. She got there, and, and uh, she was this fantastic cook, and all everybody else was, they were terrible cooks. She got in there and, and ended up getting where she was running the place. And it would show them they were using all these old bowls and all these different things and scraping them and everything. But when they would take the food in to the inside where the people were at, they would, it was very, very elegant. They, they had the finest of silver, the finest of, of china, you know, the very finest of, 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 of crystal, and the, whatever money could buy. And so it's painting a picture like that. It's a, a tremendous message to you and to I. But in a great house, and what is that great house? You know, it, it can be the, the, the church, it can be the, the ministry that you have, it can be the, the, the temple on the inside of you. It's like a palace too. But a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. Well, what does that mean? It means that those, those, those old bowls, uh, that, that uh, do, you have, do you have any cooking bowls? You know, it's cooking bowls and, and that you cook with, and, but you never put your potato salad in for company. I mean, you got to get the good china out here. We you got go. these old I things. Have good china. I remember you got, I think we don't have them anymore, but we you guys had these old, big old bowls. And you, you know, nobody's around you, just, who, who cares? But Royal you, you got some special company, you know. You, you, don't, you don't want people to see that what you cook it in. And so, Anyway, <laughs> uh, some in, our, in your kitchen, you more than likely you will have dishes that you use to, to mix things together and mm -hmm. cook things, and, well and then you will serve it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we had company tonight. We had Miss Kim came over and spent a little bit of time. And so normally, if it's just Pastor Noami and I, it's paper plate. <laughs> got to wash them, yeah. pitch them in the trash, and you're done. But we got we got special company. China. Get out the good stuff. Get out the good stuff. We're not doing no paper plates tonight. We're going to impress. And so, and real fortunate. But we had some. Okay, now, now we need to go to the next verse to find out what this verse is talking okay. about. Okay. <laughs> if a man or a woman therefore will purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify the meat for the master. Well, I'm just, I'm just kind of a 
kitchen Christian. I just soon stay in the background. Well, God doesn't want you. You can stay back there if you want to. But God, God wants to use you. Mm. God wants you to, to shine. It says that if therefore if a man shall purge himself, that word purge is a very powerful, powerful word. It means to, have you ever, I don't know if it sounds gross, but I don't mean it to sound gross, but there's no other way to say it. Have you ever seen projectile vomiting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it means that. It's not just, no. It's, yeah, it is. Always. I was fishing for this guy. <laughs> Country road, hallelujah. One time we were over on a little, little lake. We, we had put this boat on the back of the truck and driven this other little lake and we were there fishing and he wasn't feeling good. And then I'm fishing, you know, fishing for bass, casting and everything. He's standing up and he said, I don't feel good. I said, well, it's nice and calm. He's I don't. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh, it's all over the water. Oh, the yeah, you couldn't watch it. Oh. But it's water. talking about you and I. There are things that can be, oh, there, there can be things that are <coughs> See, God wants to clean us up. Yes. As a child of God, as a Christian, God's desire, it says, if you want to be used, you're going to have to purge yourself. You're yeah. going to have to clean up your act. You're going to have to get out of sin. You're going to have to move away from these yeah. things. You're going to have to start living a holy life, yes. a life that's yeah. right before God and, and before his eyes. And so God doesn't want to use he, the, the kitchen stuff. He wants to use you and me. He wants to use us. And he says, you're going, to, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to clean up your act. Now, there's people that are out, and they they they, they live rough. I mean, Christians. They, they live pretty carnal lives. You would not know they're Christians sometimes. And we can say, oh, I, mean, I can see that one. They're, they're no good. No, no, no. But you know what? There's other, other Christians that it's all up there. Yeah. All the bad stuff's up here in their head. So they are judgmental. They're severely critical. They are not loving. They're not kind. They're they're jealous and all kinds. And it says it doesn't matter, you know, if, if people are, are doing smoking and drinking or whatever. It, it, we have to cut those things out. You have to get rid. If you want God to use you and be the vessel that God desires, He said, now you you don't have to purge yourself. You say, well, what what I want God to do it. Well, I had people come. I had a guy contact me one time, and he, he was naming all his things that were wrong with him. And he said, I want you to cast them out. I'm thinking, th th those are works of the flesh. And, 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 and I, you can't cast them out. You've got to crucify them. Mm -hmm. Well, he said, I don't want to crucify them. I just want you to cast them out and make it easy for me. He refused to, 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 to want to get rid of them. But this is what it says, you have to purge yourself. You're going to have to change the way you think, the way you talk. Some Christians have some pretty salty language. Is salty a good word? Uh, I don't know, it's a four-letter word. No, five or six, or whatever. I don't have skeletal in front of me tonight. Good word. Salt, that's a little bit more. Therefore, if a man will purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, set apart, meet or right, ready for the master's use, mm -hmm. and prepared unto every good work. So God's desire is when we become Christians and we begin to realize that, that, that God wants to use me. But the first thing that we have to do is you really have to clean up your act. We have to clean up the outside. We've got to clean up the inside. Hallelujah. Now, to be honest with you, I'll just be, just because I can't speak for anybody else, I've been saved a long time, a very long time. I honestly cannot remember ever, once I got saved, ever swearing again, ever cursing. I cannot remember it. But I used to. I mean, I could be as foul as any of them. I could. But I, but I just, it just left me. There was a lady I knew. 
and, and she, 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 she testified, she said she had the foulest mouth of anybody. She said, when God saved me, he saved my tongue. Well, the other people, that sometimes they, we just, they just need to, to, to they, they didn't get that. They, they have to crucify that part. Okay? Um, Brother Hagen, he said this, he said, people will, and this is back in, in the day, uh, he said, now, now people will, will, he will, will, they'll damn people that, that smoke cigarettes. They'll damn them to hell because they smoke cigarettes. And because they're, they're destroying their bodies. And yet, he says, those very same Christians that will condemn everybody else, they'll be worrying. You know, worry is a sin. Well, why is worry a sin? Because he tells us don't worry about anything. If God tells you not to do something and you do it, what is it? Disobedience. It's a sin. Yeah. If God tells you to avoid the appearance of evil, and you don't, now it didn't say they were doing evil, but but it said that it looked like they were doing evil, and then, now don't do that because it gives the gives the, the body crest a bad name, and you don't do it, you're just as guilty as a, the adulterer, the pornographer, or whoever else is out there. Well, I would have been Lord, let's go. Amen. Amen. You said it was no need to us, Lord. I, yeah. Truth. Yeah. We would purge ourselves, we would be a, a vessel of honor. God's greatest desire is to use you, to flow through you. So his glory can be manifest. So the world can see he longs to do it. The only thing that hinders it sometimes is us. Because we get in the way. How? And it says that, it, that we have to do something. The best of our sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. Have you, are you set apart for God? Yeah. Yeah. We, we set ourselves apart for a lot of things, but we, you have to set yourself apart for God. For God to use you, and then you then you get prepared for every good work. Verse twenty two says, "Flee also useful lust." In other words, you, you've got to crucify your flesh. When you become a Christian, we begin to crucify. Right? We begin to deal with some things. We begin to, the old man is dead, but boy, he keeps crawling back up out of the grave all the time. Okay, flee useful lust. Follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish, unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. You know, there's so many questions out there. There, there is nothing, to be honest with you, there is nothing that I teach that is not controversial. There is nothing that I teach that isn't controversial to somebody somewhere out there. If I'm teaching faith, There'll be there. There'll be people that that would that that would find fault with it. Yeah. If you're teaching love, there'll be people who would find fault with it. Yeah. If you're teaching the, the the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll certainly find people yeah. that are, are going to find fault with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, there is, everything that we teach us is controversial in a sense. Water baptism is controversial. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, do we do it? Only in the name of Jesus. Or, like Jesus said, we do it in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. But yet, yet there's people that get up and they'll say, well, the Father is not a proper name. We are men, most of us are fathers. And so therefore, the name of the Father is not a particular special name. Unfortunately, Jesus didn't know this. He didn't know this. But he did say this. He said, call no man father. Because you have one father in heaven. Ooh. So, it has to put the capital F, father. And then when he prayed, he said, he, then when the disciples said, what he says to pray, he says, well, when you pray, he didn't say, pray, Thus thou Jehovah. He says, to our Father. Father. Well, the Son isn't any special name. Well, I don't know about that. Okay? The 
sons. It, well, are, are, are we sons of God? Well, we, we are. He is the son of God. We are a son of God. We have small s. And we are a son of God. All of us. He is the son of God. And they said, well, the Holy Ghost doesn't have a real name. They say, well, the Holy Spirit doesn't have a proper name for it. Oh. But Jesus said, to me, water baptized. So they say, well, how do you water baptize? It's controversial. We'll say, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the last one, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I believe. And so, upon your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus, just to be certain that the, everybody gets it and say, well, we just, we get it off. <laughs> I had said that to somebody and they go, I didn't know if that was quite right. <laughs> we had a lady, she got water baptized in her bathtub. She was telling this other man of a other denomination, her relatives of mine, strict, being born again, strict. And, um, he said, well, have you been water baptized? She said, I most certainly have. He said, where were you water baptized? She said, in my bathtub. He said, how is that possible? Because when they push you down, your feet would come up. Uh -huh. You can't be water baptized. Uh -huh. Not according to our doctrine. See, that's why the Bible says they're rightly divides the word truth. Well, how much water does it take? Okay? How much water does it take? Well, we believe in immersion, of course. Okay. Lord. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. I, if people, listen, this is, this is the scripture that I use. It says, if a man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. First Corinthians, I mean, chapter 14 and 15. If a man is ignorant, let him be ignorant. I'm not going to argue with people about the Bible. If they want to believe it, my, me arguing isn't going to change what they believe. Okay? Their hearts, or their minds are made up, you know. Like Brother Hagen said, their, their minds are like concrete, thoroughly mixed up and already set. So you can't, you can't, you can't not talk with some people. Now, if, you, if, if somebody has honest questions, well, Pastor, I, I, you know, I was struggling with this. I, I, I don't know what, how, what the, could you help me maybe with the meaning of this or something? Because I, I kind of think maybe it means this, but I, I certainly would love to, to hear your take on it. And then you can help somebody, but there's a lot of people you can't help. Okay? Hallelujah. But foolish and unknown questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. Next verse, please. And the servant, any servants here? Mm. Any servants here? And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Mm. That means all those little dust ups that we have with people, we're not supposed to have those. Okay? Well, Pastor, don't don't you have don't you have arguments with people? No. Not really. I just say yes, ma'am. Whatever she said. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> My wife and we don't argue. Do we? I just. <laughs> 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 it's not law. <long. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Hallelujah. I thought it was more like zero zero now than that. Thank you, Lord. He's gonna be a triple needle. Work with me, people. <laughs> <laughs> and the servant of the Lord must not. I, I, I always encourage people that work with me that you know, it's difficult not to not to get yes. where you want to just you want to like Sister Alice said I got the five full ministry right here. Right. <laughs> and uh, but we have to be really careful. The Bible says, oh, look, the Bible says to live in peace with all men yeah. as much as lieth within you. Okay. Now that means that we are to try to, to, to live in peace with everybody that we can, but then there's going to be some people that will not 
allow it. They will not make it easy. They're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. it says, but you lie. It says, uh, 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 what did we, how did we quote that one? As much as uh, lies what? within you. As much as lies within you. Live in peace with all men. Live in peace with all men. Okay? As much as, and as much as you can. But I, I've, been, I've been around people, all I want to do is argue with my <coughs> I refuse. I'm, there's no sense. No, no, it doesn't do, prove anything. You know, have you ever been in a, a sword fight with the word? I mean, cutting and slashing and. And, <laughs> and they, you've got bloody Christians, you know. And you, yeah. Take this. You know, we, we supposed to save that for the devil. Mm -hmm. You unrighteous, you know. You uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you getting out? <laughs> <laughs> and the servant of the Lord must not strive, no. but be gentle unto all men. Apt to teach, patient, mm -hmm. instructing those that oppose themselves. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I don't know about you, but my, <coughs> my biggest problem is not somebody else. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God's redemption will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil and are taken captive by him at his will. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know. I enjoyed that tonight. Yeah, Lord. Pastor Nell, I'll let you come and wrap this, wrap Philip's name for us. service Sunday morning. See you at there's coffee Sunday morning yeah. from 9.30 to 10.20. So if you want to come and have some fellowship, come a little early and uh, grab a nice cup of coffee and some sweets, that would be great just to fellowship. And otherwise, we'll let you go. So God bless you. Thank you for coming out.